Can you beat Grand without killing a single enemy? Well, yes, but actually no. Let me explain. You cannot complete the game of Grand without killing a single enemy. Even if you use other bugs to kill different enemies, you will not be able to defeat any single boss. So here are my rules for the challenge. I'm allowed to use random bugs against my advantage to aggro them onto different enemies to kill them for parts. I cannot deliver a final blow on an enemy with an axe or an arrow, but I'm able to use gas, arrows, and summons to do that for me. And finally, I'm able to use the thorns mutation, but I'm not allowing myself to use poison or bleed in this challenge run as I'd feel like that'd be way too easy. With all that out of the way, onto the challenge. Just like every other challenge run, we start off in the kid's case, and the first thing I tried to do was try to kill an aphid to get some aphid slippers, but the puddle saved him, unfortunately. So I said screw that, I'll do that later. So I go around and collect some basic resources, including food, then I go and find a field station for granola bars for healing, then research, plant fiber, sap, and pebblets. Researching those items unlocked new recipes, which I made a pebble axe, then use that pebble axe to cut down some clover leaves as I wanted the new armor set, the clover armor set. This has tender foot defense, which means I take less damage from tier 1 creatures, and also trickle regen as a set bonus. My next goal was to go ahead and get some stink bugs to go ahead and get some more creature parts, but then I saw a soul drank kill an aphid, so that's one free aphid meat for me. Then I go ahead and lured the stink bug into the red ant nest, so then they can just like worry about killing that stink bug, so just free parts for me. And while that's happening on the surface, I'm going inside the cave, getting the red ant hill burgle chip, as well as getting some brittle marble and quartzite for upgrades. And as I exited the red ant hill, I saw the massive grave that the stink bug has completed by killing at least maybe 20 ants, and soul ants included. But my main priority was not red ant parts, it was actually lawn mite fuzz so i got another stink bug to lure them closer to where the lawn mites spawn near the spacer laser then i lured the stink bug even further to kill the lawn mites that were chewing on the cable wire on the outside i then put a collar and lead on the stink bug then lured him even further to the spacer where he could stink up the area to kill the gnats because i need gnat fuzz for the sprig bow the reason why i want to use the sprig bow is because i want to try to do a challenge run with bows and also summoning with bows is really easy i then sat down and watched as a ladybug and a bombardier beetle had a mad stare off and then i just yoinked the parts of the bombardier beetle because obviously he lost the staring battle over near the head I got a wolf spider to take out the three bombardier beetles, but sadly he only took out one of them, and the bombardier beetles took out the wolf spider, but that doesn't matter, I lured him and got one spider fang, meaning I needed one more fang for the next bow upgrade, the insect's bow. I also used the bombardier beetles boiling mechanic to lure in lawn mites so they could instantly die as I needed more lawn mite fuzz to make myself the aphid slippers. I needed the aphid slippers, not really for necessity, but just to run faster in the backyard. And then I spent a very long time in the hedge, breaking all the web sacks, getting all the tier 2 resources, but mainly the stink bug gas sacks, as I would need stink bug gas sacks to make gas arrows, which is the only way I'm able to kill enemies. Meaning I was now able to take out the lawn mites chewing on the wire inside the cave. Which also means Burgle has been unlocked after a full day and a half, which is really slow for me. I now wanted to go and make myself a gas mask and I need a weevil nose for it because if you didn't know, your own gas arrows actually do damage to you. So I spent a little bit of gas arrows to kill some weevils. I think it took like maybe four or five. And then once again, made my base on this stump, my favorite base location, just setting up being very simple. Funny enough, I actually had enough resources to make the insect axe. So I just said, stuff it, let's craft it. It was now time to revive Burgle and then after you got revived, I gave him the auxiliary chip I had collected, then went to the ASL and got the spithing station upgrade as well as the fiber bandage efficiency upgrade. My next goal was to do the pond, so I went over here to this little spot to cut down some eel grass strands without making a pebble dagger. I then gave this bombardier beetle some assistance as he was getting a 2v1 from an orb weaver and an orb weaver junior. I now went ahead and precisely calculated when to shoot a gas rope because I only had one left to kill some gnats as I need their fuzz for gas masks and for in case emergency. And funnily enough, on my third loot of a gnat, I got the gold card. I couldn't imagine it taking over 300 kills just to get a gold card, am I right? It was now time to expand my base, getting in some spinning wheels so I then can make some silk rope as I need silk rope for crow feather arrows as well as some other miscellaneous crafting. And about half a day of farming for resources, I finally had my gas mask crafted. I went ahead and placed down a spithing station and upgraded my gear slightly as well as my spring bow. After getting some silk rope spun, I went ahead and made my guild tube, meaning it was now time for the pond lab. And inside the pond lab, I went ahead and activated three of the breakers, meaning I could now gain access to the pond dome. And then inside the dome, I grabbed all the muscle sprouts for further smoothies, then got my first super disc and super chip. My next objective was to go into the hedge lab and complete that because I previously didn't complete it, so I put my hand on the biometric scanner and also got tier 1 of Natural Explorer, thank goodness. I quickly went around the entire lab and got all the password pieces, then put all the password pieces into the computer and then got myself another super chip and duper disc. And then climbed to the tippy top of the hedge lab, getting the broodmother BLT. While I was trying to chop this crow feather up into pieces, this mosquito said nah -uh, and then decided to fling it in the air for no reason at all. Back inside the oak lab, I went ahead and duplicated a spider fang so then I could now make myself the insect hammer as well as the insect bow and then upgrade it to level 5. I then used my insect hammer to get some ice cap mints and wouldn't it be funny if I get a trinket like a completely useless trinket for the 
That's not funny. I hope you know, elemental trinkets have a 1% chance drop, by the way. Next up on the labs list was the haze lab, but before I did that, I went ahead and got all the crow feather pieces in the haze, because there's like four or five of them just sitting in here. Oh, and I also cheesed my way into the haze lab, just getting an infected weevil to blast open the doors for me. And now the biggest challenge so far is the infected ladybug. She is immune to my gas arrow, so I have to think up of a new strategy. So I got myself the spiky spray and got her down to pretty much almost 1 HP. I then chopped down an omelette meal that I got from the haze lab, which has thorns on it. And then I used her bomb attack to my advantage, as if I get hit by the bombs, she dies. See here? Magic. And as my reward, I got the final duper disc, second last super chip, and a bunch of goodies, including bombs. I really don't know why I did this, but I lured some black workarounds inside the haze so I can just take infinite haze damage until they died. I don't know why I did this once again. I did a bit of parkour and skipped the entire black ant lab to get inside the sandbox for free, and then used the spiky spring strategy to get the ant lion down to 1 HP, and then go ahead and gas her up because she couldn't move, and inevitably I would win. And I did the same strategy with all the ant lions inside the cave, as I'll need a bunch of ant lion parts for my main armor set. And then inside this pit i went ahead and got a bunch of salt as the wasp queen and the mantis are both weak to salt damage and because i had very limited resources and i really didn't want to kill a bunch of ant lines i went ahead and duplicated all the ant lion parts i had collected then went ahead and made the ant lion wide brim and the ant lion poncho and upgraded both these armor sets down to level five over at the tipped over grill i got some ever charcoal chunks as i need four pieces to craft an oven and i would need an oven to craft boss summonables i went ahead and took out a bee as i would need bee fuzz for my ant lion boots as well as a bee stinger for the, the wasp queen bbq medley which i got both of them I went back home and made myself the antlion spurs, which means I could complete the entire set bonus, which gives quick draw, which means I can shoot my arrows a lot more quicker. Then I went ahead and made a bunch of crow feather arrows, and then made some spicy arrows, as I bet you know what boss I'm fighting next. But before I did that, I went ahead and dug up some grubs, and then used some gas arrows to kill them. If you didn't know, I didn't know this, grubs are actually immune to gas, even though they have the gas icon above them. So I had to put my thinking cap on, and I had to get a red worker ant aggroed onto me, then I dig up a grub, and then block the red worker ant attacks to kill the grub. I did this a few times against some more grub hide and some grub sludge so I need this for smoothies and the black ant shovel. I went ahead and cooked up the broodmella BLT and collected it, then crafted myself a smoothie station, then made a bunch of soothing syrup using all 30 muscle sprouts I had collected. Back at the super duper I duplicated some gas sacks because if I ran out of gas sacks and I couldn't have any more gas arrows I was back to square one. And now it's time for the hedge broodmella boss fight. And now my goal was to get the rascal rogue mutation and just whack the hedge broodmella until I got the trinket. And let me tell you this trinket took the life out of me, it took about an hour and a half of just save resetting every single time but i'm thankfully glad i got it equipping this trinket gives my summons more damage as well as my summons always have poison on hit but you may think how did i get rid of the summons in the hedge broom on the boss fight when she summons them um i just shot gas arrows at the ground and just like waited till they died because my gas arrows do such little damage i just shoot like three or four on the ground just to kill an entire wave and the final stretch once the hedge broom was stunned i went ahead and shot a gas arrow on the ground and made her choke till she died killing the hedge broom gives you the mum jeans mutation and when you equip it you can summon your own spiderlings with a small percent chance. With the hedge broomella dead, it was now time for me to go ahead and do the black ant lab, getting access to sector A and B, and looting a bunch of chests, getting a bunch of thorn meals. And now it's time for the assistant manager boss fight, and just like the infected ladybug, the assistant manager is immune to gas damage, so I had to do the exact same strategy I did before. Whacking his face until he got to pretty much almost 1 HP, then let thorns do the work, but it wasn't that simple. The assistant manager has laser pylons, electricity pylons, and on top of that, his own summons, which I could not kill at all because they took way too long. So after running around his entire boss fight arena, for about 10 minutes for like a headless chicken, I went ahead and finally killed him after he shocked me with an orb of getting thorns to kill. And my reward was the final super chip. I also collected the assistant manager keycard, so I went back to the sandbox and collected the sandbox burgle chip and some goodies from this chest, then went back to burgle and gave him back all the auxiliary chips and the super chips that I had recently collected. And then inside burgle shop, I went ahead and bought a lot of tier 2 and tier 1 upgrades, meaning I could now make my entire antlion set down the bulky path, because I would want maximum defense, because the sleek bonus for the antlion set is not worth it. I I also made my gas mask down sleek for one certain boss fight coming up. It's now time to go into the upper yard to get some tier 3 tools. So I went ahead and tried to take out some Black Ox Beetles as I wanted the tier 3 Black Ox Hammer first because this is the hardest one to get. And the Broodmuller Poison Trinket is coming in clutch. And literally when I was about to kill a second Black Ox Beetle, he decided he wanted to go into the space program and disappear from the existence of the backyard. I have no idea where he went. Well, I couldn't get the Black Ox Hammer, so now it was time to kill a Termite Soldier to hopefully get the Termite Axe, and my Poison Summoners are coming in clutch once more. But I did have to use a Gas Row because the Poison wasn't enough, but I let that slide once. And as the Termite Soldier got taken out, I got two Termite Chompers, meaning I had enough to make the Termite Axe. I went to the nearest field station and analyzed the Termite Chompers to get the Termite Axe recipe, as well as the Black Ox parts, because I wanted to 
survey scan where the Black Ox Beetle actually went. And as I survey scanned him, it said he was right next to the bike, so that's pretty good, right? So then I went ahead and made myself the Termite Axe, and then went ahead and went to camera mode near the bike, so where the Black Ox Beetle actually was, and I couldn't find a trace of him, so I'm just assuming he fell out of bounds or something. With my Termite Axe in hand, I went ahead and broke some pupa for pupa hide, as I need two pupa leather to make the Black Ox Hammer. I then went ahead and lured a Ladybird Lava near the dust mines, where he took every single dust mine out after taking a very long time, I'm talking like 15 minutes here, but hey, I got the dust mine fuzz. I went ahead and needed to take out some fire workaround, so I got a handy ladybug to help me take them out and I needed a bunch of fire ramp parts and a few heads for boss recipes and an item I'm looking for later on. I then decided to cheat and summon in 5 milk walls. I think 5 was a good amount because I needed 5 to upgrade my max mutations. And now it's time for me to chuck my thinking cap on once again and being super smart, being big brain. I need to take out another Black Ox Beetle, so I got some wasps to attack the Black Ox Beetle for me. And also during this, some fire workarounds got in the fight as well, so even more parts for me. And I'm only catching this in post now. This is where the Black Ox Beetle went. I have no idea where I went after this. I literally thought that he ran away or something because I thought the wasps killed him, but nope, he just went to space again. I went ahead and got a green shield bug, and so I wanted these super gas sacks for super gas arrows, but as I came back, the wasps were attacking the ground, so clearly the green shield bug decided to take the opposite route of the black Ox beetle and go down instead of up feeling defeated i went over to the moldor highlands where i got some tiger mosquitoes to kill another black Ox beetle i need the tiger mosquitoes dead as i need mosquito blood sacs and the tiger mosquito beak for the bbq medley and when the black Ox beetle died he had one part meaning i still need to kill another one for a horn so i gave the next black Ox beetle the worst treatment ever after he threw a rock on my face a black widow death so i lured a black widow over to his face and once he attacked the black widow it was over for him so i just sat back watched him and laughed and the black Ox beetle must have felt bad because he gave me a black Ox horn which is what i needed so i went ahead and crafted up the black Ox hammer and then used the hammer to break some sour wormholes which gave me sour lumps and consumed them to get the sour sensation mutation which has thorns which is pretty much the worst mutation in the entire game at this point but for this run it helps out a little bit and also during this time i was going around the entire upper yard breaking all the wasp pipes and this time the wasp hive was actually disturbed meaning that my curse was broken and i can now finally enter the brawny boy bin once again normally and inside the wasp queen's lair i went ahead and got searcher's dead body and got the bbq medley as well as getting my next big trinket which was guarded by this Black Widow here. And as the Black Widow turned her back, I booked it all the way to this web sack which had the trinket inside of it. The Widow Whittling Trinket. And surprisingly, I got out of the Black Widow's face scot-free. The Whittle Whittling Trinket gives me the chance to summon in my own Widowlings, which have Venom on hit. I then went ahead to the full size scabby, then used my Black Ox Hammer to bust open the back and put in the replacement fuse. And what this does unlocks the Undershed Lab, and in the Undershed Lab there is a new boss fight, my favourite boss fight, the Mant. So I prepped accordingly and time to fight the bad boy. This fight was relatively easy as I was just sitting back shooting mint arrows at him with my quick draw just being super quick and I was summoning spiders and whittlings all the time. And I had no gas arrows on me so when he was about to die I just chucked on my thorns mutation and just let him whack himself to death. And killing the man gives me the man's serious strange mutation, a very useful mutation which summons my own little man. Very small chance though. After the man I went ahead and freed Wendell Tully from his containment and went inside the fridge and got myself the best thorns meal. How do you even say this? The quesadilla antlion? I have no idea man. So back at home in the oven, I made myself the BBQ medley, then made a bunch of splinter arrows from the wooden splinters and dust mite fuzz that I recently collected, and a bunch of feather arrows and then turned those feather arrows into salt arrows. I also made myself the fire ant shield as this gives corrosion which lowers enemies defense. I made the fire ant shield for two reasons. One, lowered enemy defense is for my summons to deal more damage, and two, I don't have mithridism so I don't have any poison resist and you need a shield to block the poison barbs from the wasp queen so it just becomes hand in hand. In the pond in the secret compartment, I went ahead and activated the stump lab which I totally didn't forget to do before, then went back into the pond and then got muscle sprout. So actually, I planted out correctly. And then I ran my tiny little legs. Yes, I did the tiny little legs movement with my fingers all the way to the Wasp Queen boss fight. Now, I wasn't too sure how this boss fight was going to go because I didn't know how my summons would be able to attack her. And whenever the Wasp Queen would summon in, I would use gas arrows to take them out quickly. And whenever the Wasp Queen would sit down on the ground, my man or like any other summons that have would just start attacking her. So it was quite a long and difficult boss fight, but not too challenging. And whenever she would summon out her Wasp drones, like sticking next to the sides of the arena, so I'd just shoot my gas arrows on the wall and then that would just take them out quite quickly and as the wasp queen was about to die you can't see a health bar because my face cam i apologize she decided to take a little rest so i decided to take advantage of this moment and gas her up so she would choke on the gas until she dies killing the wasp queen obviously progresses to the next boss but also gives me my next big upgrade the bard's bow and the bardic inspiration actually buffs the bard's bow giving me extra buffs and then went ahead into the stump lab, which I totally didn't forget again to get the Mantis boss recipe. And then back at home, I craft up the Bard's Bow, then upgrade the Bard's Bow all the way up to level 7. And also during this time, I was cooking up the Mantis boss recipe. And speaking of the Mantis boss fight, he is here. And I threw some pollen at him to hopefully like slow him down, which doesn't affect his jumping at all. But this boss fight is really simple.
all i've done this boss fight blind on the hardest difficulty just so you guys if you want to know i'm just plugging myself here but the easiest way to kill the mantis is just run around in circles around the tree stump and shoot him with just salt arrows and also something that i learned new today even though i've got 400 hours and grounded the mantis doesn't get affected by gas damage at all so i had a result going back into what i previously did and chuck on my thorns mutation and let the mantis whack me until he dies yes it hurt me but it probably hurts him more kill the mantis gets the apex predator mutation which unlocks secret hidden abilities within boss weapons for the bard's bow it allows me to summon my own wasps and now after this immaculate tiger mosquito jump skip to get inside the moldor castle it was now time to fight director schmecter but before that i went ahead and collected the moldy note just in case i forgot it which is the infected broom on the boss recipe and now it was time to fight director schmecter and my goal was simple shoot him with sour arrows until he gets down to one hp and funny enough this is my first time ever using a summoning build like genuinely in grounded not in custom game and i thought this was just amazing and i thought this boss fight would be somewhat challenging because the orc spiders that he summons in can always summon in every single time and they can stack if i don't kill them but my summons took them out quite easily and i mean the entire director schmecter boss fight is just a complete joke i think the devs need to revamp it in some way shape or form and when director schmecter was winding up his big shock orb attack it hurt me but it probably hurt him a lot more Oh, I'm, oh wait, I already made that joke already. With all bosses but one defeated, it was now time for the infected Brumella. And now it's time to stock up, and when I mean stock up, I mean take all the mint shards and chuck them in my inventory so I can craft mint arrows on the fly during the fight. I then scaled up to the top of the haze canister and plugged it with the gun pieces I'd recently collected. And you actually need to plug the haze to start the infected Brumella boss fight, otherwise her lair is blocked up. And now it's time for the infected Brumella. All my mutations are all summoning besides meat shield, and I wish I chucked spicy safety on, but I am dumb and didn't think about it. It. I also forgot to mention I really dislike bows in this game because I can't perfect block after I shoot an arrow I need to wait like a second or two and it was at this point in the boss fight where I thought the mant was overpowered look how much the mant is doing in just three combos look at the amount of health he just chunked out of her and yes the infected brimmer has three stages which means my summons need to kill her three times because technically she dies three times but for two times the fungus inside of her just pushes on and gets revived somehow during the second phase it really wasn't that entertaining to watch I was just sitting in here shooting at her and and waiting 20 minutes for her bombs to go out and when the third phase came around it was time to put my game face on yes my summons do distract her a little bit but my summons are a percentage chance and if they go down it's all just me and her once again and yes at this exact point in the fight i realized i should have chucked on spicy safety because i almost died here thankfully i upgraded my gas mask down sleek which gives me explosive resistance so every time she chucked out a bomb i quickly switched my gas mask and switch it back just for that extra defense but let me tell you this is the most difficult time i've ever had versus the infected brumella like in this fight here if i didn't have meat shield equipped i would have been dead i was sitting at probably 5 hp which really made me stress out because i haven't died once in this run at all and surprisingly the damage over time poison she has on her somehow killed her i'm not sure how this happened my, my reaction was definitely forced here because i didn't expect her to die at this point but hey she's dead and i'm happy this time killing her was literally harder than me killing her on medium difficulty with tier 1 gear i'm not even joking with the infected brumella dead it was now time for the final hurdle which was the final javmatic defense probably the hardest part for the challenge and after setting up my very minimalistic defense it was now time to start the java medic you may think this would be relatively easy right but no i have no idea what the enemy's health bar is at so one wrong arrow could literally kill an enemy and destroy the run so i had to be super careful but on my first attempt the bugs almost destroyed my mixer c and i really didn't want to risk killing an enemy so i just loaded my save back again to call this cheating i do not care my challenge my rules so my second attempt to reduce the risk from the arrows, I decided to use my termite axe just to slash at him, just to get small damage in, but get my summons in. But once again, this did not work as I was getting overrun extremely quickly and my gas arrows do the littlest amount of damage in the entire game, not even doing a single bar of health to any of the enemies. So when the mix was just about finished, I just had to sit back and watch the war unfold. Just Wendell fighting for his life out there, but I couldn't do anything because I was not risking it at all. And with the final defense finally finished and the beginning cell being cooked, yes, I yawned here because I'm very tired from this challenge run. So I then went ahead, picked up the field and beginning cell, and then ran all the way back home. It'd be pretty funny if I just shot an enemy and just like ended the entire challenge run.